What did we cover yesterday? Um. Oh, all that death. All that death. Judah and Israel, you're getting what they deserved, right? For falling into paganism. Um, people have been just been dying left and right. And we were surprised with what happened to Jehu, right? He ended up dying, but God sort of blessed him. He said that your your descendants will stay uh, on the throne for the next four generations because he did what God told him to do in, uh, in the sense of uh, killing Ahab and his descendants, even though Jehu didn't abide by God's it didn't abide by God in the sense he didn't follow. He didn't. He didn't follow God. Like he he did what God told him to do, killing Ahab and his descendants. But he didn't follow God. God, uh, any uh, separate from that, right? So, yeah, man. I keep saying this. Like everyone talks about how God is ruthless in the Old Testament. No, 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 no. I don't think so. He's being very merciful, in my opinion. All right, so let's jump into 2 Kings chapter 11. And <laughs> I got to unmute. 2 Kings chapter 11. Let's start it off. When Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the royal heirs. But Jehoshaphat, the daughter of King Jodom, sister of Ahaziah, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him away from among the king's sons who were being murdered. Mm. And they hid him and his nurse in the bedroom from Athaliah, so that he was not killed. So he was hidden with her in the house of the Lord for six years, while Athaliah reigned over the land. In the seventh year, Jehoiada sent and brought the captains of hundreds of the bodyguards and the escorts. So when Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the royal heirs. So basically because her descendant couldn't get to the throne, she didn't want anybody else to get on the throne. Is that what, it's, is that what her motive was? Let's see what this Bible says. Athaliah means the Lord is exalted. Sadly, she did not live up to her name. All the royal heirs, what is that? Jehu had executed King Ahaziah of Judah, Athaliah's son, shortly after he had executed Joram of Israel. Uh, Ahaziah's older brother had been killed in an Arabian raid. Further, Jehoram, which that was, we haven't seen that, is Second Second Chronicles 22.1. Further, Jehoram had killed his brothers and other royal relatives uh, when he took the throne, again in Chronicles. While Jehu had had slain still more of the royal house, uh, therefore Athaliah's destruction of all of the royal heirs must have consecrated on her own... I guess it's too small. And bad angle, not good lighting. Um, come on, Mike. Therefore, Athaliah's destruction of all of the royal heirs must have consecrated on her own grandchildren. None of the usual details relative to ascension, assess, accession to the crown in Judah are given here. Athaliah clearly usurped the office, setting aside the precepts of David's covenant. Div of the Davidic covenant. Mm. So is Athaliah not a descendant of David? I would assume so based off of that. Let's look it up. Man, I misspelled something. Athaliah, whose name means afflicted by God, was queen of Judah and the only female monarch to sit on David's throne in biblical history. Athaliah was the daughter of King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. 
and she married Jehoram, the eldest son of Judah's king Jehoshaphat. Hmm. Was she still in a in the line of David though? She married Athaliah was the daughter of King Ahab. King Ahab Was King Ahab man, I'm forgetting. Was Ahab the yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Israel, Israel, yeah. So, but Judah's line, I mean, David's line was the kings of Judah. Man, we got to look at a proper family tree. But it's going to be, I mean, we tried looking up this before, right? The David family tree and I think we did find a decent one what was your name Athaliah the mother of Ahaziah all spawned from David Athaliah was the wife of Jehoram no 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 Athaliah was the queen of Judah, the daughter of King Ahab, and married Jehoram. Yeah, okay. So wife of Jehoram, which is the descendant of David, Jehoram, Ahaziah, Ahab. Okay, Ahab was not in the line of David, and she was the wife of Ahab and the mother to Jehoram. So she was not of the line of David. So that's why my commentary said what it said regarding Athaliah. And it looks like that is going to be taken care of because Joash is going to be crowned king of Judah. So she usurped the crown. That's why I just, it's, it, it worded it like that. Okay. All right. And brought them into the house of the Lord to him. Let's go back. Seventh year. Jehoiada sent and brought the captains of hundreds, of the bodyguards and the escorts, and brought them into the house of the Lord to him. And he made a covenant with them, and took an oath from them in the house of the Lord, and showed them the king's son. Then he commanded them, This is what you shall do. Mm. One third of you who come on duty on the Sabbath shall be keeping watch over the king's house. One third shall be at the gate of Sir, and one third at the gate behind the escorts. You shall keep the watch of the house lest it be broken down. The two contingents of you who go off duty on the Sabbath shall keep the watch of the house of the Lord for the king. Uh, like, imagine a Game of Thrones style story set in this time period or even when the promised land was getting established with the, the with the conflicts of the surrounding territories and all that that would be really good but you shall surround the king on all sides every man with his weapons in his hand and whoever comes within range let him be put to death you are to be with the king as he goes out and as he comes in. So the captains of the hundreds did according to all that Jehoiada the priest commanded. Hey, Sevens. Each of them took his men who were to be on duty on the Sabbath with those who were going off duty on the Sabbath and came to Jehoiada the priest. And the priest gave the captains of hundreds the spears and shields which had belonged to King David that were in the temple of the Lord. Then the escort stood, every man with his weapons in his hand, all around the king, from the right side of the temple to the left side of the temple, by the altar and the house. And he brought out the king's son, put the crown on him, 
and gave him the testimony. They made him king and anointed him. So sevens, what we're doing here is we're just doing a, a Bible study. We're going through, we're going through right now. We're going through Second Kings chapter eleven. So stop me if you if you uh, you know if you want to make any comments, ask questions, stuff like that, and we'll just keep on going. All right. Right side of the temple to the left side of the temple by the altar and the house, and he brought out the king's son, put the crown on him, and gave him the testimony. They made him king and anointed him, and they clapped their hands. Long live the king! Long live the king! So we got Joash, right? Joash is, we're back, we're, right? Because, yeah, we're back in the line. We're back in the line of David. We had that one divergent to Athaliah. Now we're back in. Now, when Athaliah heard the noise of the escorts and the people, she came to the people in the temple of the Lord. When she looked, there was the king standing by a pillar, according to custom. And the leaders and the trumpeters were by the king. All the people of the land were rejoicing and blowing trumpets. So Athaliah tore her clothes and cried out, Treason! Treason! And Jehoiada the priest commanded the captains of the hundreds, the officers of the army, Take her outside under guard and slay with the sword whoever follows her. For the priest had said, Do not let her be killed in the house of the Lord. So they seized her, and she went by way of the horse's entrance into that would the king's house. the house of the Lord, having and someone there killed she there? was killed. Then Jehoiada made a covenant between the Lord, the king, and the people that they should be the Lord's people, and also between the king and the people. And all the people of the land went to the temple of Baal and tore it down. They thoroughly broke in pieces its altars and images, and killed Matan, the priest of Baal, before the altars. And the priest appointed officers over the house of the Lord. Then he took the captains of hundreds, the bodyguards, the escorts, and all the people so it seems of the land. like it seems like we're starting to get on the right track here. Judah is starting to come back on the right track. So hopefully things continue to progress this way. We'll we'll find out. And they brought the king down from the house of the Lord and went by way of the gate of the escorts to the king's house. Then he sat on the throne of the kings. So all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was quiet. For they had slain Athaliah with the sword in the king's house. Joash was seven years old when he became king. Little boy king. All right, let's jump into chapter 12. In the seventh year of Jehu, Joash became king, and he reigned 40... Jehu was the king of Israel, correct? Um, let me just go back. Jehu yep, was the king of Israel, and we have in the seventh year, we have uh, uh, Jehoash becoming the king of, uh, of Judah. 40 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was... Right? Jehoash is becoming... Yeah, no, we had Joash just become crowned the king of Judah. So is Jehoash... Where's Je, who's Jehoash becoming the king of? Because he re, he's reigning in Jerusalem. So that can't be Judah. But if I'm not mistaken, Jehu's reign was a decent amount of time. It was wait, well over seven years. It was He reigned for decades. So... Let's see. Let's see the commentary of my Bible. What it has to say. What is it? Chapter twelve, verse one. Um. Yeah, it doesn't say anything. Let's keep going in the text and see if uh, it reveals anything. 
was the 12th king of the ancient northern kingdoms of Israel. Jehoash was the 12th king of the ancient northern kingdoms of Israel. Twelfth king, right? We had um, Jehoash, right? Okay. Okay. Then what about uh, what about uh, Jehu, right? Because Jehu is the was a king of Israel as well, and he, as far as I'm aware, he was he was king for a few decades, right? Let me go back and look in my Bible. So how did they have, um, okay, the northern kingdom of Israel, is that what you're saying? Okay, Samaria, right? Because that part of, a part of uh, Israel did split off, the northern part, right? And so Jehoash became, you're saying the Je Jehoash became the king of that area. Jehu stayed uh, king of the rest of Israel. And then you have uh, Judah, Joash re reigning over there. Is that what you're saying? I'm guessing that, what you're, that I'm guessing that's what you're saying, and that makes that makes sense. In the seventh year of Jehu, Joash became king, and he reigned forty years in Jerusalem. Jehu was the tenth of the northern kingdom of Israel, since Jeroboam the first. Okay, see that's where I have that's where I have a question, because. Let me see. Um, it's a, and the period uh, period that Jehu reigned over Israel and Samaria was twenty eight years. So he had a reign of twenty eight years. That is Second uh, Kings chapter ten, verse thirty six, right? And you have the death of. Where is it? What did we just read? Right? And then chapter 12 here it's saying in the seventh year of Jehu, Jehoash became king. So where did the. What happened to Jehu's reign? If he, if he reigned for 28 years, in the seventh year of Jehu, how did, how did Jehoash become king? That is my confusion. Unless I'm interpreting this incorrectly okay so you're saying that we had Jehu and then Jehoash took over in the seventh year of Jehu. And then Jehu came and took over at a later time. So he was king twice. So I guess we will find that out as we continue reading. So let's just keep going for now. Reigned 40 that years would make in sense. Jerusalem. His mother's name was Zibia of Beersheba. Joash did what was right in the sight of the Lord all the days in which Jehoiada the priest instructed him. But the high places were not taken away. The people still sacrificed and burned incense on the high places. And Joash said to the priests, All the money of the dedicated gifts that are brought into the house of the Lord, each man's census money, each man's assessment money, and all the money that a man purposes in his heart to bring into the house of the Lord. Let the priests take it themselves, each from his constituency, and let them repair the damages of the temple wherever any dilapidation is found. Now it was so by the 23rd year of King Joash that the priests had not repaired the damages of the temple. So King Joash called Jehoiada the priest and the other priests. Why have you not repaired the damages of the temple? Now therefore, do not take more money from your constituency, but deliver it for repairing the damages of the temple. And the priests agreed that they would neither receive more money from the people, nor repair the damages of the temple. 
Then Jehoiada the priest took a chest, bore a hole in its lid, and set it beside the altar on the right side as one comes into the house of the Lord. And the priests who kept the door put there all the money brought into the house of the Lord. So it was, whenever they saw that there was much money in the chest, that the king's scribe and the high priest came up and put it in bags and counted the money that was found in the house of the Lord. Mm. Then they gave the money which had been apportioned into the hands of those who did the work, who had the oversight of the house of the Lord. And they paid it out to the carpenters and builders who worked on the house of the Lord, and to masons and stonecutters, and for buying timber and hewn stone to repair the damage of the house of the Lord, and for all that was paid out to repair the temple. However, the there church. were not made for the house of the Lord basins of silver, trimmers, sprinkling bowls, trumpets, any articles of gold or articles of silver from the money brought into the house of the Lord. But they gave that to the workmen, and they repaired the house of the Lord with it. Moreover, they did not require an account from the men into whose hand they delivered the money to be paid to workmen, for they dealt faithfully. The money from the trespass offerings and the money from the sin offerings was not brought into the house of the Lord. Mm. It belonged to yeah. the priests. Hazael, king of Syria, went up and fought against Gath and took it. Then Hazael set his face to go up to Jerusalem. And Joash, king of Judah, took all the sacred things that his fathers, Jehoshaphat and Jehoram and Ahaziah, kings of Judah, had dedicated, and his own sacred things, and all the gold found in the treasuries of the house of the Lord and in the king's house, and sent them to Hazael, king of Syria. Then he went away from Jerusalem. Now the rest of the acts of Joash and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? I really wish we had um, the chronicles of the kings of Judah and Israel. And his servants arose and formed a conspiracy and killed Joash in the house of Milo, which goes... I, okay, that's interesting that they have... is two different spellings for the same king, right? Jehoash or Joash and Joash. Right, they're both Joash, but two different spellings. That's odd. That it's in the same text with two different spellings. Let me see if my Bible has any commentary regarding that. I doubt it, to be honest. But let's see. Um, yep, it does not. Yeah, that's interesting. ...down to Silla. For Josachar, the son of Shimeath, and Jehazabad, the son of Shomer, his servants, struck him. So he died, and they buried him with his fathers in the city of David. Then Amaziah, his son, reigned in his place. Hopefully things continue the way they were. Um, Joash, Amaziah. Okay. But I want to look this up. What uh, what Sevens has brought up in the in the uh, chat is King Jehu and. Joash. The two, there are two kings with the name Joash or Jehoash in the Bible. One uh, king of Judah and the other king of Israel. Okay, so are we talking about two? <laughs> were we talking about just now two different kings? And that's why they use two different spellings. Probably. Okay, so just now, I'm based off of that. I'm assuming that these are two different kings, right? We had it says 
one king of Judah and the other king of Israel. Um, all right, so this Joash is the king of of Judah. But this is Jehoash, king of Judah as well. So it's using the same, it's using, yeah, two different spellings for the same king of Judah. So that's, uh, this is not talking about the same two over there. But um, the story of King Joash of Judah starts with that of King Jehu of Israel, anointed king of Israel by Elishu. Jehu is tasked, okay. Um, da -da -da, we, see, we know what he's tasked with, right? That's what we covered yesterday. <laughs> yeah, they have multiple kings with the same name, so it's confusing. Um, after Jehu or Jehu is anointed king of Israel, he was set out against Joram. Okay, King Joash of Judah first comes on the scene when Athaliah the mother of King Ahaziah, whom Jehu had killed, took charge of Judah. Right? This is what we had just read. Athaliah killed all the royal family uh, she could find in Judah in order to secure the throne for herself. However, Athaliah missed one of her grandsons, the infant Joash. The evil queen's sister rescued young Joash and his nurse, and the child was hidden for six years in the temple while Athaliah reigned in Judah. In the seventh year, because it said in the seventh year of, let me go back. In the seventh year of Jehu, uh, Joash or Joash became king. But that was after Athaliah had taken the throne. So how is it the seventh year of Jehu when he was not on the throne? Or is Jehu is the king of... Who is Jehu the king of? Jehu the king of... Jehu is the king of Israel, I believe, right? Yeah, Jehu was the king of Israel. Okay, 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 okay. So this is making sense now. This is making sense. So Jehu is the king of Israel... And you're having all these changes in Judah coinciding with with his his reign. And they're just using his reign as a, uh, a constant, essentially. And um, so in the seventh year, so even though he reigned, what, 24 years? Um, in the seventh year of his reign, this is all happened. Okay. All right. So we were getting confused with the kings of Judah and the kings of Joash, because there were two kings of, there were two King Joashes, one of Judah and one of Israel, and we're getting, we were getting those two mixed up, or I was getting those two mixed up, so, all right, so we're talking about King Joash of Judah reigning in the seventh year of Jehu, who is king of Israel, and Athaliah had reigned after I mean, had reigned uh, in Judah, and then Joash had taken over. Okay, 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 okay. All right. You got that, Sevens? We got that cleared up, right? So we had uh, Jehu is the king of, uh, of, Ju of, of Israel. I'm sorry. Jehu is the king of Israel. And we, have, we were talking about this king of king, uh, Joash here is the king of Judah. So that was the confusion. We're not talking about King Joash of Israel. We're talking King Joash of Judah. So that that was the confusion there. Okay. So that makes sense. All right. So kind of we'll read up on it again now. Yeah, I'm going to put this this uh this article has a a decent uh chronicling of events here. So I'm going to put this down in the uh in the description after the stream is over so you can check it out and then um if you want the text well you got the text right second kings 11 to 13 so it's in there but yeah i'll put this article down in uh in the in the description so you can check it out after the the stream is over so let's uh 
we're at 36 minutes already so let's just keep going to uh, we'll jump into chapter 13 In the twenty-third year of Joash, the son of Ahaziah, king of Judah, Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, became no king over Israel in Samaria, and reigned seventeen years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, and followed the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, mm. who had made Israel sin. See, this is a this is a pattern we were seeing before, right? After. Um after uh, Solomon and uh, Judah essentially seceded from the promised land, right? From the rest of Israel. You had Israel and then you have Judah. Israel fell into paganism and they were having all these changes of kings left and right because they were, you know, God's not with them. While Judah stayed true to God for a while, but at the eventually they both, they both fell into paganism. But so now we're seeing... Um, something similar happening again right with um with joash king joash of judah you know following god and then you have israel falling into into a commotion again Jehu became king over israel in samaria and reigned 17 years and he did evil in the sight of the lord and followed the sins of jeroboam the son of nebat who had made Israel sin. He did not depart from them. Then the anger of the Lord was aroused against Israel, and he delivered them into the hand of Hazael, king of Syria, and into the hand of Ben-Hadad, the son of Hazael, all their days. So Jehoahaz pleaded with the Lord, and the Lord listened to him. For he saw the oppression of Israel, because the king of Syria oppressed them. Then the Lord gave Israel a deliverer, so that they escaped from under the hand of the Syrians. It's just like judges all the over children again. Of Israel dwelt in their tents as before. Nevertheless, they did not depart from the sins of the house of Jeroboam, who had made Israel sin but walked in them, mm. and the wooden image also remained in Samaria. For mm. he left of the army of Jehoahaz only fifty horsemen, ten chariots, and ten thousand foot soldiers. For the king of Syria had destroyed them, and made them like the dust at threshing. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoahaz, all that he did, and his might, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? Man, so, things would we would get a lot of things cleared up with the the uh, the timings of all these kings if we had these two books, the books of the chronicles of the kings of Israel and of Judah. Jehoahaz. I wish we those we still had fathers, those today. And they buried him in Samaria. Then Jehoash, his son, reigned in his place. See, that's the other funny thing, especially with this this audio Bible. They pronounce sometimes they pronounce Jehoash as Joash, and they pronounce just now Joash as Jehoash, and so you have these two similar names. Some translations looks like based off what we were just looking at have them spelled the same, and they're both reigning in two different kingdoms, Israel and Judah. So that just that's just adding to the confusion here. In the thirty-seventh year of Joash, so it's, king really of hard, Judah, it's hard to keep track of Jehoash, the son of who? Jehoahaz, became king over Israel in Samaria, and reigned sixteen years. So this is the other king, Jehoash. And he did Joash. evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not depart from all the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel sin, but walked in them. Mm. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoash. All that he did, and his might with which he fought against Amaziah, king of Judah, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Jehoash rested with his fathers. Then Jeroboam sat on his throne, and Jehoash 
was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. Elisha had become sick with the illness of which he would die. Uh -oh. Then Jehoash, the king of Israel, came down to him and wept over his face. Oh, oh my wow. father. My father, the chariots of Israel and their horsemen. And Elisha said to him, Take a bow and some arrows. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let me go back a little bit. So is he, is he, is he crying because of oh, Elisha's my illness? And he's... My father, the chariots of Israel and their horsemen. <laughs> and Elisha said to him, Take a bow and some arrows. So he took himself a bow and some arrows. Because he is the then king of Israel. Then he said to the king of Israel, Put your hand on the bow. So he put his hand on it, and Elisha put his hands on the king's hands. Open the east window. And he opened it. Shoot. And he shot. The arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria. For you must strike the Syrians at Aphek till you have destroyed them. Take the arrows. Strike the ground. So he struck three times and stopped. And the man of God was angry with him. You should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck Syria till you had destroyed it. <laughs> How did he know now he was supposed you to do that? you strike Syria only three times. Oh, man. <gasps> then Elisha died, and they buried him. And the raiding bands from Moab invaded the land in the spring of the year. So it was, as they were burying a man, that suddenly they spied a band of raiders and they put the man in the tomb of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood on his feet. And Hazael, king of Syria, oppressed Israel all the days of Jehoahaz. But the Lord was gracious to them, had compassion on them, and regarded them because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and would not yet destroy them or cast them from his presence. Now Hazael, king of Syria, died. Then Ben-Hadad, his son, reigned in his place. And Jehoash, the son of Jehoahaz, recaptured from the hand of Ben-Hadad, the son of Hazael, the cities which he had taken out of the hands of Jehoahaz, his father, by war. Three times Jehoash defeated him and recaptured the cities of Israel. All right, see, he, this is what I'm talking about. This is not helping. Two different spellings. Unless, are we talking about two different kings right here <laughs> and Jehoash the son of Jehoahaz recaptured the recaptured from the hand of Ben Hadad the son of Hazael the cities which he had taken out of the hand of Jehoahaz his father by war three times Jehoash defeated him and recaptured the cities of Israel no they're talking about the same guy this is the same guy they're just using the different they're using different spellings which is I don't know why let me see if they're actually doing it in my bible because I'm, I have the same New King James version, so let's see. Um, yeah, they're doing it. That is odd. Let's see. Um. Jehoash. Do we have an ex? No, I mean, I mean that's. 
No, they're not the same person. They're two different people, but it's confusing. I'm curious. I'm going to see if someone has an explanation as to why they use the same... The... Uh, well, I guess that's not really... I guess that's down to the translation, right? Um... Yeah, they're just using the names interchangeably, so I don't know what I'm exactly expecting to find here. Probably just an explanation of why they use multiple spellings. Jehoash, let me make this big. Jehoash, also known as Joash in the King James Version. Joas or Joas was the eighth king of Judah, the sole surviving son of Ahaziah after the massacre of the royal family ordered by his grandmother. I must be thinking of Solomon becoming king a second time. Yeah, man. They should at least, uh, these translations should at least be consistent with the spelling of the name. And then down in um, the references, you could sh they could showcase an alternate spelling that was used. Like, choose one spelling for the translation and not, don't, or if you want, since there are two kings of the same name in two different, uh, in, in Judah and Israel, use one spelling for one, another spelling for another to d differentiate the two. So it'll be easier to follow. I don't know why. Uh, I don't know why they they decided to do with what they did, and look like looks like it's only for the King James version, and which would also be the case for the New King James version, right? So that's that's interesting. Yeah, it's a lot of lot of changes in the king, so it's hard to keep track of things. Um, so that's gonna be it for today. We're gonna stop at chapter thirteen. Tomorrow we'll jump into chapter fourteen. And we're going to go more, and we'll, we'll start off with uh, Amaziah reign in Judah, Amaziah's reign in Judah, and then we're going to go over uh, predominantly more ra kings in uh, in Israel, because we saw again this is a pattern that we're we're finding right once they fall into paganism, uh, you know God's not really with them, and same thing happened to Israel. They went through a numerous number of different kings, and yeah. We have subheading after subheading of different reigns in Israel here coming up in chapter 15. So we'll check with all that tomorrow. We'll go over chapter 14 and 15 and we'll see how far we go. But we'll do that tomorrow. Hope you guys enjoyed today's Bible reading. Thanks for joining Sevens and uh, in interacting and, you know, adding a lot. Um, hope you guys enjoyed today's reading of chapters 11 to 13. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for chapter 14, all right? Seven, so hope you guys hope you have a great day, and I'll see you later. Take care. Thanks for the sub, Sevens.